A while back, I did a video about what LSD does to your brain, and it was a popular one. So now we're back to talk doobs, blunts, chronic, the stickiest of the icky, or if you're a 60s hippie, sweet Mary Jane. That's right, this time we're talking about cannabis. Plants of the cannabis genus, also known as marijuana or weed, occupy a very weird place in our society. In some places in the world, they're a completely legal drug, like tobacco or booze, but in others, carrying some can send you straight to jail. Cannabis might well be the most widely used illicit drug in the world, so it's time to take a look at what this plant actually is all about, and what is it doing to your brain. Cannabis has been around for a long time. There are records of its use back in 4000 BC. We've actually dug up stashes that are 2,700 years old. The active ingredient in the plant is mainly tetrahydrocannabinol, or THC for short. Along with some other cannabinoids, the ones we probably study the most is simply called cannabidiol. Now, the cannabinoids are concentrated in hair-like structures on the plant called trichomes, which evolved to protect the leaves from being eaten by animals and insects. And as the plant ripens, THC-rich resin and oil glands start to appear, concentrated around the future flowers, the buds. And it's these buds that people are often purchasing if they buy the drug. Okay, so THC is the active ingredient, but what is it actually doing to your brain? Well, we still don't really know all the details. What we do know, though, is that THC primarily affects the cannabinoid receptors in the brain, the CB1 receptors. And it's these receptors that affect short-term memory, coordination, and problem solving. Now, your body actually makes a natural cannabinoid that activates the CB1 receptors, and by overstimulating them, you are basically experiencing a bit of brain damage, albeit short-term and reversible. But hey, no worries, because THC also leads to the release of dopamine, so you're happy about it. So what about the other cannabinoids in the plant, though? Well, it's thought that cannabidiol might actually counteract some of the effects of THC, and possibly be the source of the sedative and calming feelings. The overall effect also depends on how you partake in cannabis. Now, most people smoke it in joints in the form of leafy-looking herbal grass or weed, or the squidgy extracted resin, usually called hash. The stronger varieties are normally called skunk. Now, increasingly, people are actually vaping it as well, but it can be eaten in food made with cannabis-infused fat. And each of these methods can have different effects. For example, some people have a bad time with edibles because they take longer to take effect, so they keep scoffing them, and then they're suddenly hit with a huge dose. A joint also has tar in it, like a regular cigarette, so it's just as bad for your lungs as tobacco smoke. So, no matter how it gets into your system, what does it do when it gets there? Well, almost immediately, some people feel less anxious and in a better mood. Or they get the giggles, and you might even get the munchies, which comes as a result of the THC binding to receptors in the hypothalamus, inhibiting the chemical signals that tell us not to eat. Oh, and it also seems to ramp up the sense of smell a bit as well. Less fun than eating everything in your fridge, you might experience a whitey, feeling faint or sick. And we do know that THC can directly cause paranoid thoughts. Now, that paranoid stoner stereotype actually turns out to have some basis in fact. The real risks, though, are thought to be on the development of the young brain. Cannabis probably isn't as addictive as, say, nicotine, but some people do find that they become dependent on cannabis and suffer from insomnia or anxiety if they try to stop. In the past decade, the number of under 18s seeking treatment for their cannabis use has risen by a whopping 50%. And that's a big worry, since it's fairly well accepted that there is at least a correlation between smoking pot and an increased risk in developing schizophrenia. And that holds true even if you adjust for selection bias. Now, that's the idea of people developing schizophrenia may well be more likely to then self-medicate by smoking weed in the first place. The link is even clearer in young people with a family history of mental illness. When they use cannabis, they increase their risk of developing a chronic psychotic disorder like schizophrenia. And the more cannabis they consume, the higher the risk. And the risk seems to be higher with young people, but it's not really clear why. Certainly, prolonged exposure to THC seems to deplete a natural endocannabinoid in the brain, which may leave more people more vulnerable to psychosis. Another recent problem is that skunk could be becoming more potent, with strains of cannabis being selectively bred to increase 
increase the levels of THC. Now, as the plant makes both THC and cannabidiol from the same starting material, if they're bred for more of one, then that leads to decreases in the amount of the other. And if it's maxed out with THC, there will be hardly any cannabidiol which is not a good thing because as I said before, cannabidiol can counteract the effects of THC, one of the effects that seems to be the link to psychosis. Before I wrap this up, I should mention the medical benefits of cannabis too. Now there is general agreement that it's helpful in treating pain, especially nerve pain, and in helping control the nausea and sickness that people often get after chemotherapy. And it can even help people deal with muscle spasms caused by MS. And a drug based on THC and cannabidiol is prescribed for this in the UK. So. There you have it. There's a lot going on in that little green plant and it does seem like its benefits and its disadvantages will continue to be debated for years to come. Me? Well, I'm going to continue to get my highs the legal way with some bubble bath, some easy listening jazz and a non-branded hot malted milk beverage. If you guys haven't seen my video about how LSD affects the brain, make sure you click on it and watch that. Uh, and also, let's open this up in the comments. Do you think it should be legalised or not? Let us know.